Hey there, YouTube Nation. I am Jason Thomas, and uh, welcome back to Regeneration Nation Costa Rica. I just had a really awesome sit-down interview with Ian Michael Haber of Holos, where we are right now. I highly encourage you check it out if you're into uh, learning about large-scale developments and uh, interacting with the, the local neighbors. And um, uh, check out the interview. It's fantastic. But what we're going to do right here in this uh, in this video is we're going to talk about some of the the structures that uh, Ian Michael and his architects and uh, builders have put together. This place is really enchanting and it's worth taking a look and it's like everything there's a learning process and Ian Michael's going to share some of that with us. So thank you so much for your time and doing this yeah, and uh, I'm going to give it to you. What have you, yeah. what's been the process of this place? Well, right before we bought the property, there were some structures that were up here, partially made out of bamboo. Um, and just before buying the property, uh, those structures actually collapsed. There was like enough rain that the rain was was on a tarp and it collapsed the whole building. So it wasn't it wasn't a building like this. It was a different no. type of building. Yeah, they were using just strips and uh, they had constructed this bamboo structure that was not it was not dissimilar to this but it was flatter and the um the bamboo was not engineered or well built so that structure completely collapsed it was kind of like an earthen floor up here and i really wanted this six-sided um building or these six-sided buildings to to mirror the bees and actually in a little bit i could show you the mariolas um so a lot of bees, the structure of their hum honeycomb is six-sided. Um, we have these Mariola bees here that are a stainless bee that was sacred to the Mayan people. And you can use their honey, which they're very small and stingless, but they accumulate a lot of honey over time. And you can use it for antiseptic or for eye drops. Anyway, I, I have been a beekeeper since I was young. And so it was important to incorporate that geometry into this. And so that was kind of the base. They had this idea that they hadn't played with before of utilizing the bamboo as kind of a footer, as a, as a base. So we poured some concrete, but then we wanted to use as much as possible local materials. So the floor in here is all local stone and this custom cut and assembled. And then working your way up the building, this is uh, local river rocks that are in the facade for the foundation. And then we stubbed up rebar and we placed these um, asper bases and you can even see like some of the root structure is still on them for like good texture yeah and then we incorporated two other kinds of bamboo that we could use to make the more geometric shapes so these come in like 30 40 foot tall bamboo um, pieces and they're very straight some of them a little less so than others but we only really used the bases as a place that we could anchor the foundations and then we have these two different kinds of bamboo, Wadawa and Philostaki, that we were able to bend. So um, this is the first time that I've worked with really circular structures. I've built a lot of buildings and, and most of them have had straight lines and angles. So this was like, it was like using um, spaghetti and building a building out of spaghetti. And so we created these, originally the Wadawa, we would take each piece and and bend it and burn it so you would use like a little lever and you'd have one person or two people on torches and then we would bend the bamboo and there's a certain point where the bamboo reaches a particular temperature and it just becomes malleable and you have to figure out like with kind of a zen attunement how much pressure to put on it and how much to to, to weight and then there's a point where it just starts to bend so you like slowly bend each of these members and then you build beans, so we would have two pieces that would be put together. We wove all of those up at the top, so this this geometry of kind of the Star of David or um, Metatron's cube, which I have on my tattooed on my body, it was incorporated in here. And then the Flower of Life, which is this geometric shape where there's a lot of built in a lot of triangles, you know, or like yeah. intersection points of circles that are triangles. So this was kind of built around the Flower of Life and you can see where the bamboo is woven together which creates a lot of strength and rigidity but also bamboo is an awesome building material because it's all it's flexible so um, if you treat it well it can last a, a really long time 
but it also can last in earthquakes. So the other day we were over, we were having dinner right after a ceremony here, and there was like a five point something earthquake, and it felt like we were in a spacecraft. Like this was all really solid, but the the ground was totally liquid, and the building you could hear it creak. It was just like whoop, 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 you know, but it's it's not going to crack like a no. concrete building. No, this no is going to going to flow. Uh -huh. So. That was the story of the Guadua. The Philistaki was a little bit easier, so we could get the tighter, um, the tighter openings, and so we framed different directions of the building. So you know, it's oriented to the east and directly at the 600-foot waterfall, the Diamante Falls, and it just creates this really awesome frame using these smaller Philistaki. And then it's like a principle of a of a building that is built like a human. So there's like there's kind of the bones and then there's like the the muscles and the skin and so the, what they call the muscles is this portion which are these strips of bamboo that then can be like laid in big lines and woven into a pattern that holds the the outer structure to hold the what they call a lona but is to cover this tarp and so once we had assembled this whole building. We had like 30 guys here. I was up here at like 6 a.m. every morning, kind of lining out teams. And once we had this whole thing built with a, a bunch of amazing Tico and indigenous, and then also some Western um, students and builders, after we got everything built and we created what's called a fascia, so this, this band around the outside, we also had to bend and burn. Um, once we had created all of that, they brought a drone in and they 3D mapped the whole building. And then they were able to send that file to a fabricator in Mexico that could build the perfect lona for the top. And then the the creator in Mexico, he took liberty with kind of the design of the um, the way that it attached so that uh, there wouldn't be any water that could get in. And there's little things that I would tweak. It's like always a learning lesson. Like I would probably have the, um, the extension come out a little bit further of the just because I can see like a little bit of wear in here. We're kind of getting to the stage about after a year and a half of it being up where you can see the points where it would be good to have a little bit more finish on it. And But I can tell that the bamboo was really well treated. So we got this from a local company, Bamboo Tico. And um, bamboo is an amazing building material if you do it well. If you don't, like especially here in the tropics, the building will be eaten in a year or two. So. I'm really happy with how this is, is like holding up and um, there's a lot of silica in in the structure of bamboo so it's extremely strong in, in that but then there's also a lot of sugars and it's interesting when you burn it it kind of caramelizes so you get these like really beautiful colors and you know there's like bamboo masters in Japan and Bali and other places where they'll use that burning technique for bending and making furniture but also it creates this really beautiful patina and like a, a, a shellac kind of on the outside. Really from the foundation and the floor, the local stone all the way through um, the bamboo, we were able to work really locally and then um, getting this cover from Mexico, which isn't too far away. Um, this should be a really enduring, beautiful, long lasting structure. Cool, so let me ask you a question. Yeah. When you're when you're bending in the bamboo, yeah. um, I mean these are these arches are very exact, and obviously a lot of that happens once you cement them in, and they just kind of they are where they are. Yeah. But when you are bending them, do you have like a some kind of frame that you have to make sure that you bend them and they exactly. cool at a very specific shape? Yeah, exactly. So we had um, you know the basic dimensions from point to point. So there's like. In the larger dome, there's there's like four different size arches. In this dome, um, there's three different sized arches. So this is like one arch goes all the way from side to side. You would take that measurement, figure out the radius, write it on the ground, and then you'd have like a rough um, template. And so the individual pieces, you would kind of get a sense by just like carving on the ground where it's supposed to land. And then this is more, it takes more than one contiguous piece to get all the way from side to side. So a lot of these are made of two or three pieces. And then you'd have, you know, two pieces that are married next to each other. So yeah, this was really, 
really fun. And um, are both is that structure pretty much the same thing? It's, it's very similar different. in principle. Yeah, the basic design is the same. Um, it's a little bigger. That was built through a workshop where we were teaching um, local people how to build in this way or have the trainers teaching people. And it's significantly bigger. Same idea. I wanted to incorporate different principles of sacred geometry. So there's like circles and triangles built into this structure. They're just really sweet, you know? It's like, as far as jungle glamping goes, it's kind of a next level of comfortable. No, these are huge. Exactly. These are these are bigger than most glamping tents I've seen down here. Yeah. So yeah. This has two queens. We have ones with kings as well. And then, you know, local wood, local hardwoods and bamboo and just different pieces that we've created. So the one piece with these, I'll just call it, you got you got a couple of fans in here, but they get yeah. hot midday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We have AC units in some, um, and so some people like that. But, yeah. yeah. And you've got up at the top here, is there more that could be done, you think, to uh, to create ventilation in the top to let some of the yeah. heat escape? And really, these, as soon as you open these guys. Oh, yeah, that'll make a huge difference. Yeah, yeah those are all openable. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that cross breeze would make magic happen. These are gorgeous, Ian Michael. Yeah, this is fun. It's all part of the adventure of experimenting, mm -hmm. trying new things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as much as possible, you know, like my preference is to do things really well and have it last for a while so that you don't have to mess with it very much. In that same vein of um, like as local as possible, we we made these pathways that are just they're wall tiles wall tiles of cement and then we just um grouted them in like uh with local clay and so that's really kind of fun and so were these built by the same designers of the the communal spaces there yeah yeah mm -hmm. more or less we kind of learned enough where we just started building things uh-huh yeah there you go. Hi, Eddie and Michael. Thank you so much for the tour of Base Camp. No, Holos is uh, much more than I thought before I arrived this morning. So thank you so much for sharing our tour here and then our interview. Great. Welcome anybody who's enjoyed this little short tour and who has interest in learning more about the history of Holos to check out that interview that we recorded. And um, yeah. Perfect. Pleasure having you up. Thank you.